So let's move across into um, our second question today and hear from Brenda about the power of quality insights um, and our ability to create razor sharp advocacy campaigns with insights. Brenda, can you please share with us an example where quality insights have helped create a strong advocacy campaign? Yes, yeah, sure, Julia, I can. And, um, you know, I agree. When you're looking for data to inform an advocacy campaign, you're looking for fairly boring stuff and you have to find that um, the compelling stuff that you need and, and put it into a way that can be easily understood by whoever you are trying to advocate to. Um, so this isn't a social change organisation, but um, in its own way does quite a lot of good for the community. Um, we recently worked with an organisation called Direct Selling Australia, and they represent the organisations who sell products uh, or services away from a fixed store. So think about person-to-person -person sales or party plans, that sort of thing. Um, think Tupperware, Mary Kay, uh, Nutramedics, etc. Um, direct sellers aren't employees of those companies. They're independent contractors who sell those products and services and in return they get a commission from the company. Um, and they are predominantly women um, who are supplementing family income uh, whilst bringing up their children. For years, um, the DSA had been lobbying the ATO for an increase in the tax threshold for these independent contractors, um, arguing that the majority of them were earning much less than the income tax-free threshold of 18,200. And the tax threshold for these independent contractors was set at only $10,000. So the DSA maintained that that was placing an administrative burden both on those independent contractors running their own businesses, but also on the ATO who have to issue ABNs and then track and monitor what's happening with those. But the DSA didn't have the evidence to support their theory, I guess, and they couldn't prosecute that theory effectively to the ATO. So they came and asked us to conduct research um, about the number of contractors they employed, the average commissions that they paid, how they paid them, annual turnover, and a range of other really quite commercially sensitive information that most companies um, would, would want to keep sensitive. Um, DSA had tried to collect that data previously, but companies wouldn't provide it to them because they weren't sure that it would remain confidential. But by using an external research agency, we could collect that data confidentially, we could aggregate it up, um, so no organisation's um, commercially sensitive information was, um, was known, but we could tell the story of what was going on. So the upshot of that research was that after years of lobbying without success, um, the DSA took our data and our story, we developed a little fact book, um, to the ATO um, and were successful in getting an increase up to $16,000. So I was at the DSA annual conference when um, an ATO officer was speaking and announced the results to all of the members and the cheers that went around the room were just deafening. Um, so that look, whilst it's away from social change, um, I think it's just one example of the power of data and insights. Um, and as you know, Annette has already talked about and we've seen in that video, trying to put it together in a story um, that will resonate with whoever you are trying to, um, to talk to. Um, so I hope that that answers the question and gives you some idea of, of um, you know, the power of data to, to, to um, change outcomes. That's a beautiful example. Thank you for that, Brenda. And it, it speaks so much to social change in a way, though, from my perspective, because we, when we unpack gender pay gap and, and pay parity, yeah. um, we're starting to learn all of these different ways that that is being limited. And that is just the economic um, benefit for that for families and for women and um, you know what a what a proud moment for you all to be involved in seeing that come to life.
Yes, yeah, no, it was, um, it was, they deliberately didn't tell me that they'd been successful until they invited me to the conference. <laughs> so I was quite um, shocked, but um, yeah, really, they were really, really happy. And the ATO was actually happy as well because it reduces administration um, burden for them. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. I love when our client's success, you know, does that with us and for us, you know, makes us nearly cry or makes us cry at times. 